Hi, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the In-Depth Genealogist Chit Chat Live. I'm Valerie, your host, and I'm so excited. I always say that, but I am so excited today to be talking to Mary Kircher Rowdy about um, what I just recently discovered a new TV show called The Dead Files. It's on the Travel Channel. And when Mary first brought it to my attention, the first thing I did was go to my ch uh, cable guide to see if we got the Travel Channel. <laughs> so we do, We and I've been watching it. And so welcome to the show, Mary. Thanks very much for having me, Val. Well, you're a regular panelist on the in-depth genealogist to chat live when we talk about the TV shows and and various other things um, so it I was just so excited and I got chills when you told me that you were on this particular TV show so I don't want to take up any more time just rambling I want to get right into it um, if anyone hasn't seen the show yet it's on Saturday evenings uh, 9 o'clock p.m. Central Time so I don't know what that would be if that still would be an hour dif difference from Eastern Time but 9 o'clock p.m. Central Time on the Travel Channel called The Dead Files and um, this particular episode that Mary was on was from August 5th, 2017. Um, I got to see uh, different records and, and so forth that they gave. Um, one that got me all excited because I've seen them before and I've obtained them before, uh, especially from Chicago, is the coroner's report. Um, there was character drawings. There was the uh, there was a 1934 fire. So there was photographs and uh, I call it the old fashioned newsreels. <laughs> yeah. But um, so let's start with. Um, what was the purpose and the scope? You know, mentioned who the gentleman and the and the lady on the show is, and what what got what the purpose of what they got you on the show for. So um, the show is um, it's a, a regular weekly series, and um, people have um, some sort of haunting thing going on with their property, something disturbing. And so they contact the Dead Files to try to figure out what is going on. And the Dead Files has two different uh, people who work on the show. There is Amy, who is a psychic, and she goes in the house and um, and feels what's going on and feels the vibrations and and um, you know, talks to the the people that are haunting the house, basically, or they talk to her. Um, and then the other part of it is Steve Deshavi, and Steve is a retired New York City police officer. And so he does the historical side of it. And what, you know, who owned that property? What was going on in it? What kind of things happened there? Like so, the background research. Right. right. So Steve and Amy don't talk. Um, and Amy doesn't talk to the homeowners. Um, Steve talks to the homeowners and gets their story, and then Steve talks to experts. And then I thought that was really interesting when they said that, you know, when they introduced the show, that they, they don't talk and that they clear out the house of some of the items so Amy can't see certain things. Right. They don't want to, um, you know, muddy what she's seeing or give her anything that. Um, you know, bring it in from outside. They want it to kind of come in from the house, from that property. So, uh, so they don't really talk until um, the end of the week. Basically, the show takes, I think, like four days to do. Um, and so Amy goes and sees it, I think, the, like on Monday night, and then they don't talk to all together until Thursday night. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that that gave me goosebumps when on your particular episode when she was walking through the house and the the real mean, angry um, spirit that she encounters like, oh, my gosh. Right. And then oh. I start wondering, gee, I wonder if any of my ancestors are like that. <laughs> yeah. So so then. Um, 
with the historical background and they bring in a couple other people. I know that there was, um, I believe his name was Jeff Davis, uh, one of the historians that presented um, a segment on the show. And then uh, obviously they had you. How did that come about or how did you get to that point? And did you get to um, uh, meet the mother and the daughter in the house? Um, so it, it started when um, a producer from The Dead Files called me. Um, she might have emailed me. I forget if she called me or emailed me. But um, and, and I called her back and we spoke on the phone and I had not heard of the show before. Um, and I didn't know if it, what it was like and if it was a, a, a real show and how well respected it was and whatever. So I kind of wanted to check it out a little bit. And um, Terry from IDG Chit Chat, mm -hmm. um, I put it out there on Facebook. So, so what do you think of the dead files? And she said, oh, I love that show. And so <laughs> that was kind of fun that once, once I kind of got, I felt like it had the seal of approval of people that I respect, like Terry, then I thought, well, I could go ahead and do this. So I, I said that I would do it. Um, and then they, you know, gave me the information and they, the show does, um, they have a research crew. So they do a, a, most of the research themselves. And they kind of told me what, um, you know, they had researched enough of the history of the property that they know, knew who owned it. And, they kind of tend to know what Amy is likely to see. So they thought it would be this one person, but maybe it could be one of these other people. So that's kind of how they give it to me. Mm -hmm. And so they gave me a bunch of information on one person. And I was able to, um, you know, kind of go through all that information and then do some on my own and try to find some things that, that I could find that they hadn't found. So I, I mean, there was like a lot of back and forth and I sent them what I'd found and, um, oh cool yeah so i did not meet the people in the um that lived in the house mm -hmm. i only met steve mm -hmm. okay yeah uh, oh my gosh i i felt so bad for the mom and the daughter and you know when the mom was describing you know she was still in the sling or for broken her arm how she was in the garage and just fell. There was absolutely, when she said there was absolutely no way, rhyme or reason that I should have fallen, but it happened. I woke up and there I am. It's like, whoa. Yeah. Um, and this is real. This, this is no made up stuff. <laughs> right. And I didn't know any of that, uh, any of what Amy saw or who was in the house or what their story was until it aired last Saturday night. So mm -hmm. I didn't know. And then the, 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 uh, the, the mom's daughter, you know, when she's talking about her two kids and, and the stepson who had committed suicide and, uh, you know, obviously I picked out the one right away where they, they were talking about or referring to, or Amy was referring to, um, the the um the boy that would come back just right. to check on them and it's like that was i mean i got all choked up it's like yeah. oh geez i'm gonna cry at the dead files you know <laughs> but so now when i mentioned about the it was really cool to see the photo of the 1934 fire and then the newsreel part um were you able to look up that that information yourself if you wanted to? Um, I think I did a little bit. Um, I was mo mostly focusing on the part that they um, they had me working on, which was the Hill Harmon part. Um, Hill, okay. But there was, um, I remember them saying something about a, a dynamite explosion. So I did um, just go through our local newspapers that I could find online to find out about that. I didn't go in depth to try to find the video footage and so forth that they had. Mm -hmm. And this Hill Harmon, um, he was instrumental in what did you find on him? Well, um, he was kind of an interesting character and he was um, really one of the very early settlers in Washington. And in, um, they, they gave me a bunch of information about him and I found some more things too. And one of the interesting things that I found 
was um, there was a, a committee headed by a man named Asa Mercer, who is one of the big um, big wigs in, to, in the start of Seattle. And Asa Mercer brought um, young women from um, the East Coast, predominantly New England, I think, um, who had been orphaned by the Civil War and brought them out here. And, and it was one of those situations in the, you know, the 1860s, there was quite a population imbalance in Seattle and a lot of lumbermen and not a lot of women. <laughs> and so they kind of wanted to civilize the place a little bit. And so Asa Mercer brought the Mercer girls is what they were called. Um, you may remember the TV show, Here Come the Brides. And I do. And on this true story about the Mercer girls. Um, and, I found articles in the newspaper about people, you know, community leaders in different areas of Western Washington who were um, to kind of, they would be in charge of a group of, of um, Mercer girls to get them placed in, in appropriate homes where they would find employment and so forth. And up on Whidbey Island, um, Hill Harmon was one of the um, committee people from Whidbey Island that was um, placing these Mercer girls. Okay. Okay. And I noticed that um, in your segment, you had handed some photos to Steve, the, the host or the, the one of the main person, people and in talking to him. And what was the connection of Hill Harmon to this mom and her daughter, daughter's house? So Hill Harmon had owned the property where their house was. I think he owned it in the, um, 1860s or 1870s, I, I don't have the deed right in front of me, um, but so he uh, purchased that property and um, and Hill Harmon had a bit of a um, perhaps a shady um, background as well um, that he was the um, superintendent of the uh, Washington Territorial Insane Asylum. Ooh. And so, <laughs> do, do, yeah. do, do. <laughs> so um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there is, um, you know, I mean, they, as everybody knows, with mental health care, it was not always um, run as well as it might have been, and not as patient focused as as we expect today. Right, and, and I and, don't mean my my comment, you know, ooh, do 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 do, right. you know, to be taken in to be mistook it's you know it it gives you goosebumps you know it's like yeah. oh my gosh you can imagine w since he owned that property and his background what kind of you know the spirits and what what was there was as following him home to to his house in Lacey where where now the dead files is filming where these people are is that right is there a a a past that that is associated with him because of of what he did and who he was dealing with and how he mm -hmm. was dealing with them that especially when impacted the property right especially when amy went during her walkthrough and then of course when she's you know when they at the end of the show towards the end of the show when she's explaining the different um uh, what she encountered the one that was really mean and has so much anger and it's like i wonder if that would have been connected to Hill Harmon in any way. Right. No. And I think that's kind of what the Dead Files was looking at. Mm -hmm. Who who was associated with this property that we're investigating that might have had some you know detrimental impact or something on the the psyche of this property. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, it's I wish they would play it again or and I don't I don't have a DVR so I can't record it and watch it over again and I already looked <laughs> you know, it's not you can't look at it or access they don't have like the recordings or the episodes on the their website the travel channel website I already looked <laughs> they so, do rerun them I, I know that the, yeah. on, and and sometimes like on Friday morning they might do two hour blocks of episodes so it might not yeah. air soon again but in a year it might be on a, a again in the morning Rerun. yeah i may catch it then and yeah it'd be much better in the morning because boy after well even tonight when i watched the next episode it's like i had to watch a couple comedy shows just so that i wouldn't go to bed in nightmares yeah my I, my sister i saw her last night and she said that 
Well, I recorded it and I, I fast forwarded to the part that you were at. I just didn't need to see that other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Um, so then when you were on for the filming, how long did it take uh, for your segment? Cause I, I didn't time it or look at, it. I think it was like two, maybe two, three, four minutes. Yeah. How, tell us about that part. Yeah. You know, how it, long? Um, it was interesting and they, they didn't know. I mean, I kind of met with a producer um, a week or two before the show and we talked about, you know, what might happen. We were in the midst of just terrible storms in Washington when that was going on. So um, we filmed at a, a restaurant um, and they had a, a room set aside. So I went in and it took probably about an hour all told. Um, I did, um, Steve asked me a series of questions and I answered the questions. And then um, one of the producers said, well, we really liked what you said here. Could you tighten it up a little bit? We liked this part. Could you, you know, talk about that again and maybe tighten it up a little bit? I could be a little wordy, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I tried to tighten those bits up. Um, and then they, um, and while we were talking like the first and second time, I'm handing them the pictures. And then they want to have shots that they can use and edit. So, um, I had to just, you know, hand them each of the pictures um, that they could film that and be able to use that. And then we did some reaction shots where I just looked at him for 20 seconds, <laughs> mm -hmm, nodded, and then he looked at me. And so they could intersperse those. So it was really fun for me to see that whole behind the scenes kind of TV stuff. Um, and that was really fun. Right. That's why I like to ask about it. You know, yeah. what, what happened, you know, without, you know, you know, cause I totally get it. I totally understand, you know, uh, with the contract and what can or cannot be, you know, shared or, or so forth. And that's why I'm really respectful of that, you know, in, in our pre-show telling you that I won't ask any questions that you can't answer. And if right. I happen to, then just say, you know, the contract says no. Um, so that's interesting how they would have you do um, just the scene, the scene without saying anything so they could cut, you know, cut and paste. Then uh, they don't know exactly what they're going to use and they don't know exactly what Amy's going to say. And so it's not until Amy does her work and then they kind of see what, um, you know, what maybe that I could share that they could show me sharing would would further the story and and they're telling a story they're definitely telling mm -hmm. a story um and so that's kind of how it all gets put together and so they um you know i he probably asked me and i answered 20 minutes worth of questions all told and i my segment was about two minutes it was just a a mm -hmm. couple of those questions mm -hmm. um and so they found the parts that um, were interesting and made the points that they were trying to to get across. Right. Because unlike us genealogists where we want to hear it all and see it all every second, you know, they can't do that on on TV shows. They just right. can't. Um, and we we mentioned that on IDG Chit Chat Live when we talk about um, who do you think you are or genealogy roadshow or finding your roots, how, you know, they can't. You know? Right. And, and and we want them as genealogists. Oh, I would love, love to hear more about that. But, um, you know, they've they've got a limited amount of, of 42 minutes or whatever it is in their commercials to make an hour long program. And so they can show what they can show and what they right. have time for. I really like the part where the uh, historian that they had uh, present uh, items that he was in a, a record office. I, I didn't look at it, you know, close enough to see if those were, you know, big land deed record books, you know, deed books. You know, they it had to have been either deed books or, you know, vital records, but it was in, you know, like you would see at a county courthouse. And I go, ooh, ooh, John, Mary should have been on that part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so they had three different experts. And I, I don't, um, I've watched the show now a number of times, and I don't think I've ever seen. Well, maybe sometimes they do three. Often it's like two different people, two different experts. So, mm -hmm. um, but they had someone talking about three different time frames of that property: the um, um, the Native American Treaty, 
um, and Chief Leshai, and then um, the my part, which was kind of an 1860s, 1870s, early 1880s part, and then the 1930s part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they, to break it into logical segments. Right. Um, yeah, that, that was interesting in how he mentioned about the treaty um, in 1854 and martial law and, you know, giving some of that historical, you know, background. Um, and then, you know, bringing the genealogy into it, you know, mm -hmm. what, what was in her, her family, you know, like with her stepson, you know, and that must have been so hard for them to go through all this, number one. I, I can't imagine, um, especially with the daughter. Right. I just, yeah, I really feel for the people on these shows that, that, um, you know, I mean, they're they're living in conditions because of of these spirits that are inhabiting their house that that can be very very troublesome. Mm -hmm. Well, when they asked, you know, well, Amy, what do you think we should do? And I said, you don't have to ask me. I'm out of there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gone. See ya. Bye. And of course, you know, that was her her strong recommendation that you need to leave. And then it was even. Um, you know, more goosebumps, you know, for me uh, when she said, you know, and uh, have your son, you know, with exorcism. Right. And it's like, oh, my gosh. And, and I, I didn't know any of that until I saw the episode. So that was kind of all weird. Wow. So this is what it's all about. Uh -huh. Well, it's kind of good, though, because like they don't want to have things in the house uh, or surroundings when Amy goes in there to, you know, taint her, you know, aspect of it. You know, same way with you, you know, not to give you, you know, certain parts. Like, oh, yeah. You know, and and have it be fresh and uh, like you need to find this out or you need right. to confirm what they found or verify what they found. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, based on on your experiences with with the Dead Files, you know, episode, would you be interested or want to do more? I would love to. Um, yeah, I mean, it was very, very fun and just, you know, kind of a bucket list item or whatever. Um, it was, it was, I was excited. Um, they, approached me because they had um, seen my website and my blog is called Searching for Stories. And I talk about that's what, why I do genealogy. I'm always looking for the story. And so that's kind of what they were looking for mm -hmm. from the genealogist, someone who could bring the story out. With documents. Right. Records. Yeah. So. Well, that's great. Oh, my gosh. I I am so excited that you were on the show. Congratulations Thank for you. for being on there. Can I have your autograph? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to be interviewing some more genealogists who I know that have been on or on upcoming episodes of The Dead Files. So I ask all of you to stay tuned because I'm going to interview each one of them and that's going to be um, upcoming in the next uh, next few weeks. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you have any questions um, that Mary could answer without breaking her contract or anything with the show, feel free or just make a comment about, you know, if you saw the Dead Files episode um, in the comments below. If you'd like, send us a quick email to info at the in genealogist.com. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and remember to go in depth, even your spiritual in depth with all of your ancestors. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi. Thanks, Mary. Thanks. It was fun. <laughs>